Hey folks. Um, today we are going to be talking about the writing process and um, hopefully you took a look through that video already um, and you're able to kind of dif differentiate that there are five different steps that we're going to go through. Uh, first is invention, planning, drafting, editing, and then revision. So starting at the beginning, um, let's take a look at this idea of invention. So what I mean is by kind of inventing and curating ideas that you're going to use to write. And there's really two big parts to that. Number one, we have to understand the task. What are we actually being asked to do? Because if we misunderstand that and like, here's the paper we need to write and we write a paper way out over there, we're probably not going to be hitting the mark very well, are we? Um, and secondly, once we understand what we're going to be doing, we've got to come up with some ideas. Writing is tough to do. Don't get me wrong, um, whether you've been doing it for two weeks or, you know, 20 years, um, it's a process and we need to be patient with ourselves and practice um, idea generation. Don't just expect yourself to come up with good ideas. It takes work. Let's figure out how. All right. So we're going to start with the task that we're going to be approaching with our, our writing process. And this is going to be writing an argumentative essay. And no, this doesn't mean that you're going to type in all caps um, like maybe you would have a Twitter argument or something like that. Um, but we're going to understand the components of arguments and look at some prompts to say, OK, how am I going to be persuasive, which is really what argument is about. Me presenting an idea that I believe and accurately backing up. That's something that I want all of my students to be able to do to clearly and effectively communicate their own thoughts and opinions. That's an important thing. Um, so argument at its core level is <laughs> Uh, if you want to look at a really snooty way to address this, it's called a process of reasoned inquiry. But I don't really like that definition. I like this definition a whole lot better. It's persuasion, like I'm persuading you about something, resulting in a coherent and thoughtful movement from claim to a conclusion. So in a clear and thoughtful and calculated way, I'm going to say, here's what I believe, and here's how I'm going to back that up leading you all the way to the logical conclusion of what this claim means for me and what this claim means for you um, and tightening all of these pieces and parts together. That's what we're working to do. So that's a big task. Um, so we're going to break that down. So here are our main goals in writing this argumentative essay. So number one, you're going to be able to develop claims, supply reasoning, and evidence and while pointing out kind of the strengths and weaknesses of these ideas. The great news is we've already done a lot of this, right? This was how we started our paragraph development in our first unit. Um, so we've already got a step up on this. Not to say we don't need to talk about it, but we do know where we're going in that one. Um, we're also going to need to be able to clarify the relationship between claims and reasons and between reasons and evidence. This is what I'm going to call development of our writing, where um, yeah, here's what I think. Here's why I think it. Now let's expand on that. Why are these two things necessarily related? How do they affect one another? Um, looking at something more deeply. We're going to write in formal style. Right? We just finished up a grammar unit. I'm going to expect you to use proper grammar and punctuation um, and avoid you know, slang, things like that in your writing. And then lastly, we're going to work on making sure we introduce and conclude things really, really well. Okay. So number one, hold up. I want you to reflect. What did I just talk about? Press pause. See if you can remember. Did you press pause? I hope so. Okay. These are what we're working on. Claims and reasonings uh, and evidence. Clarifying relationships between these ideas. Writing in formal style and then getting an introduction and concluding statement into our writing. Okay. So if that's our task, we've got to start thinking about, okay, how am I going to get my ideas going if I'm given a an argumentative essay to write about that I need to make a claim and provide reasoning and evidence for, well, here's how you're going to do it. Um, this is a quote from, from Jack London, I believe, a, a famous American author, where he said, you can't wait for inspiration. You have to go after it with a club, um, which I appreciate. Uh, writers all over the world, um, experienced writers black. That is not something new that each high schooler is like, oh, I've, I've got nothing to write about. Yeah, a lot of people don't have anything to write about. Um, that's because we're not actively pursuing thought. So we got to get out there and start writing. You can't just sit and wait on an essay um, until the day before it's due, 
hoping that something's going to come to you and you're going to have this moment of clarity where you're just going to write a perfect essay. Not going to happen now, not going to happen ever. So here are three things you can do to get your ideas started. First one is going to be free writing. So you're going to sit down with a pencil and a paper or open up your Chromebook and just start typing. Um, and the goal is to type for like a certain amount of time. Um, so 10 minutes, 15 minutes, like make it a long time, push yourself as hard as you can. Um, and you are not going to let your cursor or your pencil stop. You're just going to write about anything and everything that comes to your mind about a topic. Um, and you're going to realize, okay, 90% of what you write is going to be not that great, right? You're going to have to push through a lot of crap to get to that 10% where like, oh man, I was writing, I was writing, I was writing, and I finally maybe came up with an idea that I'm passionate or thinking strongly about here. That's where you need to start. Um, we could also work on this idea of list making, and I'd say do the same thing. Set yourself a time limit. 10 minutes, I'm going to make a list of everything that I can think about on this topic, and I'm not going to stop. And then I'm going to break that list down and keep listing things within my list items um, and list and list and list. Generate those ideas. Or another way, if you're not like a sequential list person, but you're more like a blob person, maybe like I am. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm more of a list person. I'm not a very big diagram person. Um, you can make a diagram, like a flow chart, a word web, a graphic organizer, uh, something that might look like this. Right? And this invention process is messy. Don't worry, we're going to organize our ideas later. But in order to organize ideas, we have to have something to think about. So we're going to work really hard uh, to design some ideas here. Okay. Um, so notice how these things are connected. Notice how these things are like one leads to the other, leads to the other, and, and then We've even started drawing these ideas across <laughs> across other ideas. It's wonderful. So this is I just found this online, but I think this is a great um, representation of here's what I push you to do. This is what your brainstorm should look like after 10 minutes of consideration. All right. So we're going to take a look at um, where we go, what, what, kind of what our goals are with these brainstorms. What's our end goal? With our, with our brainstorms. Um, so once we've thought about ideas and we've just generated things that we could write about, now we need to start putting them in order. And, and we don't want to quite step into our next writing process yet, um, which is going to be planning. Um, but we do want to give ourselves a goal of like, with my brainstorming, here's what I'm going towards. So if I think about an argument, um, this is how it's generally going to be organized, where I'm going to have, here's my one main idea. This is what I'm trying to prove, absolutely. And I'm going to support that. I'm going to prove that by looking at some supporting claims, some subclaims that can go back and prop this big idea up. And then for each one of those little claims, I'm going to add evidence and reasoning and define the relationships between all those things leading back to my main idea. So throughout your brainstorm, um, I want you to be kind of in the back of your mind working towards this idea of I'm trying to find my thesis. So if I'm given a prompt, what am I actually going to say about it? And what I mean about a thesis is, is it's the main idea that's going to govern the rest of your paper. Um, and it needs to be three things. You gotta, you gotta memorize these three things. Whenever I write a thesis, a main claim, however you wanna think about it, um, it has to be arguable. It has to be something that people can take two different sides on, or maybe three different sides on. It has to be supportable. So in other words, I've gotta be able to come up with evidence that I can use to back that up. And lastly, it's gotta be specific. Um, it's really gotta be specific to the task at hand. So if I give you a 10 page research paper, your thesis could be probably a lot bigger than it's going to be if I give you a you know, five paragraph essay, page and a half. What can you really prove in a page and a half? Not much. So it's got to be really specific what you're talking about in terms of what is my main idea, what I'm really going to write about. Um, and it's important because this is going to guide every other sentence that we write about, and it's going to be the central organizing point um, for the rest of our essay. 
So let's take a look at some different theses that someone might come up with after you know brainstorming for a little bit. Um, here's a first thesis. Tolkien is the best writer of fantasy ever. Is that arguable? Yes. Is it defensible? Uh, yeah, it is. Is it specific? Absolutely not. Right? If I was going to try to defend the idea that this guy is the best author ever, think about, about how much information I would actually have to pull in to do that. A lot. So I'm going to narrow this down a little bit. So let's, let's add this little clause in. When it comes to children and adult literature, Tolkien's Lord of the Rings is better fantasy series than Harry than Rowling's Harry Potter. Much more specific, right? Now I'm not just talking about Tolkien as a general writer. I'm doing two things. I'm putting him in comparison to J.K. Rowling, and I'm talking about, I'm basically cutting out everything else that's not strictly children, strictly adult literature, but the combination of both. Much more specific, but I can do even better than this. For most readers, Tolkien's The Return of the King offers arguably a more profound examination of evil than Rowling's Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. So I've narrowed this down to be an even more specific now. Um, I've put this qualifier in here for most readers, and so I'm not going to say for everyone. I don't have to prove this to everyone, but just for most people. Now instead of looking at their series as a whole, I'm looking at just a specific book, and within that specific book, I'm looking at this one specific thing, an examination of evil. So this could be the process through that you go through as you're creating your thesis. So coming up with a thesis like this at the beginning of your brainstorm is fine, right? That's that's what we're doing in a brainstorm. Um, and then through the process of, of planning and drafting and revising, we're going to keep revising this thesis statement. So um, I just want you to have this in the back of your mind as we go through this invention process. Speaking of back in your mind, what are the three things that a thesis needs to be? See if you can write them down. It needs to be arguable, it needs to be supportable, and it needs to be specific. Um, so let's take a look at some different examples of theses, different, different claims. So I've got owners of trucks and SUVs should have to pay an energy surcharge. Um, I've got charter schools on an alternative to public school. People who read novels are more likely to attend sports and movies than those who do not. And students graduating from college today can expect to have more debt than any previous generation. So for those claims, I need us to think about whether each is arguable, defensible, specific, maybe too specific to be a claim, a valid claim that we could use as a thesis. So I've got the one highlighted. This is one that's actually probably a good starting point for a thesis. If I was writing a paper, I don't know if I would end here, but this could be a great starting point. because I'm making this, this claim as evaluation that owners of trucks and SUVs should have to pay an extra energy surcharge. Trucks are using more gas or you know they're putting out more emissions, whatever. Um, Definitely a controversial issue. Some people might take very, you know, I, I drive an SUV. I might take offense to this. Um, and then, but these other three, charter schools are an alternative to public schools. Is that arguable? No, that, that's a statement of fact. We can't argue that. People who read novels are more likely to attend sports and events than movies than those who do not. Uh, arguable to an extent, right? This would be e pretty easily verifiable with, you know, one short survey. After, you know, talking to people, I could pretty much say yes or no to this question. So not really all that arguable. And then the last one, students graduating from college today can expect to have more debt than any previous generation. Again, yeah, not arguable. Um, I think that's pretty much a given. Um, and if you don't believe it, Let's you know do one short research, one Google search, and you're gonna have your answer, right? You can't really write a paper arguing for this to be true or not. So um, we are going to, I want you to take one of these claims and see if you can rewrite it to make it a more arguable claim as practice. So go ahead and pause the video and give that a shot just as an attempt to start working on these theses. All right, and lastly, so what are our big takeaways from this um, slideshow? 
Number one, we're starting to look at this idea of arguments and how are they composed? What is the task going to be um, where when we get done with our brainstorming and our planning, we need to have a solid thesis created. That's what we should be kind of working towards as we're brainstorming. Like, what's my main idea? And what ideas could I use to back that up? And then we're going to go through this invention process to help us get there, where we're going to be actively working to produce ideas, not just sitting back waiting for ideas to come. We got to go get them. Um, that's by doing free writing, by making lists or doing diagrams like brainstorms or word webs or graphic organizers, whatever you think. All right, folks, good luck in your writing process.